not a difficult thing to become passionate about an Australian icon that's fighting for its very existence. And when the first press releases uh, came out about koalas could be ex extinct in New South Wales in 30 years, I took some convincing, but then after the bushfires, uh, I am now absolutely certain that that's true. But more to the point, in Port Stephens, our situation was already more perilous. And we're adamant that unless uh, we can take major corrective action here in Port Stephens, koalas will be extinct in Port Stephens within, in the wild within 10 years. My name is Ron Land and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Port Stephens Koala Hospital. My wife and I were involved in a rescue uh, of a koala behind our home in uh, Shoal Bay. And uh, just by informal discussion with the lady who came out, it was very apparent uh, quickly that they were struggling. Uh, they, they being five to six uh, ladies who did all of the rescuing and all of the caring, all in their backyards. And so what I did, uh, and a, a, not that it required any special skill, but uh, it, was, it was apparent that the organisation needed a centralised facility where you could um, husband your resources, especially your physical resources, and provide a consistent level of care uh, from that one facility. And from that concept in 2015, uh, this is the result. And we only had four yards when we started and uh, three koalas. Uh, Tolly was the first one in here. This is Tolly, he's one of our oldest and longest residents. He's been at, in and out of care since uh, 2011, but he's in permanent care with us since 2017. Because of his age, he has problems regulating his body temperature. He also has gut motility issues, so we give him a supplementary feed. That can include um, some blended leaf, pumpkin, some baby rice, and this is just to help him maintain his weight and keep his gut moving. Um, he keeps us on his our toes because he his health is so up and down, and he is also one of our gentler koalas, so we deal with a lot of wild koalas, um, and he is definitely one of the ones that um, tolerates human activity the most. After Tolly spends his night in the ICU, we will basket him in one of our laundry baskets, which we also use for rescue, give him a little bit of leaf for the journey, and we will transport him to his yard for the day. He will stay in his basket some days. <laughs> so he has nice low logs and plenty of tree forks to sit in. Um, he is a bit older and wobbly, so we just need to make sure that he doesn't fall. Um, so that's why he doesn't have access to a full tree. So my name's Erica Johnstone, I'm one of the deputy curators here at Port Stephens Koalas. Before working here, um, I was a full-time bird and mammal keeper. Um, I've been a zookeeper for almost seven years now, and I wouldn't change it for the world, but um, yeah, just love koalas, I've always worked with koalas. They're just sassy. They're really, really complex in, in their anatomy, in their physiology, as well as being really weird animals to work with. So you never know what you're gonna get. Every koala has its own personality. I'm gonna check his eyes, his ears, and his nose and his chin first. So I'm looking for any sort of abnormalities. He's eating like a trooper. So I just feel in his ears to make sure he doesn't have any ticks or anything like that, any lumps or bumps. But he looks all good. So I'm just gonna check his hand temperature. He's like, why are you touching me? So his hand temperature feels good. His scent gland is nice and oily there. I'm gonna give him a bit of a body score. I'm feeling for the muscle over the top of his scapula, so over his shoulder blades. I feel up towards his head too. So I'm trying to make sure that there is a layer of muscle there. Oh my gosh, he's a chunk. <laughs> he's obviously getting a bit better. The biggest threat to koalas in the wild is habitat destruction. And that's another reason I love koalas so much is because if I can get people to love koalas, they live on the eastern coast of Australia, right? So the highest human population in Australia 
is the eastern coast. If I can get one person to care about a koala and they want to stop habitat destruction, how many other species are going to in turn be protected as well? Those little tiny ones that no one even cares about, doesn't even know that are critically endangered, that are so important for our ecology. If I can get people to care from coming to a facility like us, seeing a koala up a tree, going that's what we, we want our kids to see, then how many species can you save? As the public, what you can do to help us as an organisation is you can donate and you can adopt a koala. So what you can do is look after wild koalas, you know where they are. So if you are living in an area where you may potentially have a koala, you don't have to do anything with it, but just if you see it, just give it a qu quick look. So you're looking for things like, is its coat browning? How's its eyes look? Is its bum wet? All these little things, if you look at them from a distance and you notice, hey, it looks fine, but if not, give me a ring. They lick the moisture off the leaves, so we've got to make sure our, our leaves are nice and wet, because in the wild, the way that a koala will drink is they'll get a lot of their moisture content from the leaf itself. They'll actually lick the moisture off the leaves and the bark on the trees as well, so it's really important we keep our leaves nice and wet so they're getting that hydration they need. In each enclosure, we do actually have uh, certain requirements. So we do have to have hoses in all of our enclosures. We have to have forks. Um, we do actually have these really incredible hose link reels. It makes it a lot easier for us to deal with wild koalas in the fact that we can miss the leaves, which doesn't make as much noise. So in here, we do actually have a lot of our leaf was cut from plantations um, that we do have off site. So each koala per year needs a thousand trees to actually sustain their diet. So we've got nine koalas worth of leaf here, um, and this will last them one day. Yeah. My name's Jonah. I'm the full-time leaf cutter here at uh, Port Stephens Koalas. The koalas here, they all get about four branches of leaf uh, each per day. Um, and then each koala will have its own favourite. So just like we have our own favourites, koalas enjoy certain species of leaf more than they would enjoy others. Koalas are very picky eaters. Um, so in this area, we've probably got about 12 to 15 species of leaf and each koala will eat sort of between six and seven species each um, and the rest of them they won't really touch. People can come here and they will see koalas uh, up trees where they're supposed to be. And it's a fine balance because uh, you know, you've got to have the koalas available for viewing uh, by the public, but uh, in all instances, the welfare of the koala comes first. There's some distance between the public and the koalas, and we don't allow the handling of koalas here, uh, nor do we allow uh, photographs uh, with humans in close proximity. The other point of difference uh, with us and other facilities is all of our koalas are wild. Our mission, again, is a very simple one. We must start to breed koalas to re-release them back into secure areas in the wild. Now, unless we can do that successfully, the rest of this is all a waste of time. We didn't uh, make the commitments, uh, both uh, physically and financially, to this facility just to be another place where you come and see koalas, even though we do it differently, and in my view, better than anywhere else in the country. Uh, there's a lot more that's attracted us to the uh, project and the level of commitment that's needed to succeed here uh, than just showing koalas.